Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the terrifying world of your own imagination. One day, a young man named Otis Manley Carter stood before a great work of art in the Metropolitan Museum in New York. It was a portrait so beautiful that it brought tears to his eyes. And Otis Manley Carter whispered, I would give my soul to be able to paint like that. It was an idle remark, spoken without thinking, on the spur of the moment. How was Otis Manley Carter to know that someone might be listening? Where'd you learn how to paint, Otis? At the Fine Arts Institute. No. I spoke to Professor DeMarco. They flunked you. You didn't show him any ability at all. Where'd you learn how to paint? Oh, come on, Bert. I was born with it. It, it just comes naturally. I've been painting all my life. But you're over 30. How come there are no paintings of yours more than two or three years old? Where did you learn how to paint, Otis? Bert, well, what are you driving at? Answer this, Otis. How come all the people whose pictures you painted are dead? Well, I, I don't Where understand. did you learn how to paint, Otis? Our mystery drama, A Portrait of Death, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Nat Pullen. I'll be back shortly with Act One. of 30, Otis Manley Carter was hailed as the world's foremost living artist. He towered above his contemporaries. To describe his work, one had to compare it with the great masters of the past. No one, but no one, painting today could breathe life into a portrait to match Otis Manley Carter. And yet, just one week before his 31st birthday, Otis made the announcement that would stun the civilized world. He was finished with art. Never again would his brush touch paint to canvas. He would neither amplify his statement nor answer questions. He simply disappeared. And only two people in all the world knew the reason why. One, of course, was Otis himself. The other was a detective on the New York City police force, Sergeant Bert Dennison. Bert! Bert, what are you doing? Just having a cup of coffee. We'll be late. Late? All I gotta do is put on my jacket, and that takes all of 15 seconds. Oh, I'm just so nervous. Why? Why? Do you know who's gonna be there tonight? Well, sure. The governor, the mayor, celebrities, the news media, the critics. Lucy, I'm impressed. After all, the showing of a new portrait by Otis Manley Carter has the same impact as a, a, the World Series or a Super Bowl or a heavyweight champion fight. Well, if you put brown sugar in coffee, do you save calories? Do you realize, Bert, that we, that you and I, are going to be sharing the spotlight with Otis? Well, you will, that's for sure. Oh, Bert, what does he see in oh, me? Oh, come on, honey. No, I mean it. Well, let's see. You're pretty. <laughs> well, I'm not beautiful. And you're smart. But I'm not brilliant. What can I tell you? He's an artist. All artists are crazy. But the most fascinating women in the world are ready to throw themselves at his feet. Sis, you're pretty fascinating yourself. <laughs> Thanks to you, Bert. Thanks to me? You sent me through college, and there were the trips to Europe. Well, I had to shape you up before I could marry you off. <laughs> and it looks like you got yourself the grand prize, the great Otis Manley Carter. Oh, Bert, I want you to like him. Oh, I like him. I like He's him. He's so... Sweet, so kind. Except. Except? What do you mean, except? Well, except every time he paints somebody's picture, it seems to me that person dies. What are you talking about? Now, tonight's portrait, that actress, Lila Beaumont, she just died suddenly, didn't she? But what does that have to and do with... And in the last five years, he painted four other women. Not one of those women is alive today. Did you know that? No, I, I didn't know that. May I ask you how you knew that? 
I checked Mr. Otis Carter out. World famous artist or not, I ran him through the ringer. Do you mean you actually investigated Otis? Do you Otis? think I'd let you marry him if I didn't? Oh, honestly, I don't know anyone who lives his job 24 hours a day. You never forget you're a policeman. I'm supposed to be on duty 24 hours a day. Otherwise, I'm cheating the taxpayers. Well, well what are you trying to imply about Otis? Nothing. Nothing at all. Just an observation. Idle observation. Oh, Otis, darling. You're having a triumph. It's a fantastic success. Well, what did you think of the painting, Bert? It's a good picture. Oh, listen to him, a good picture. Is that all you can say? Well, it's certainly lifelike. I'll say that. Oh, well, thank you, Bert. Good evening, Otis. Professor DeMarco. May I offer my congratulations? I'm honored, Professor. Honored. Uh, may I present my fiancé and my prospective brother-in-law, Miss Lucy Dennison, Detective Sergeant Dennison, Professor DeMarco of the Fine Arts Institute. How do you do? How do you Glad do? to meet you. Otis, once again, you force me to eat crow. Oh, come on, Professor, please. No, no, I was wrong about you, Otis. Wrong. And I don't care who knows it. Yeah, but the truth is, Professor DeMarco, you taught me everything I know. The truth is, you didn't start to paint until after you left me. Congratulations, Otis, on a double triumph this evening. Your painting and... Your fiancé. Each is a magnificent work of art. Thank you, sir. And now, if you'll excuse me, Sergeant Dennison, Lucy. Yes, sir. Well, he never got over it. And I don't think he ever will. He said I'd never amount to anything. Oh, but you're not serious, darling. How could anyone who knows anything about art... Oh, there's Eric von Heiden. The one who's doing the new book about Come you? on, come on, darling. I'll introduce you. Uh, give me a rain check. I feel the need for a little refreshment. Oh, I... oh, uh... Excuse me, sir. I... I hope I didn't spill that on... Oh, it's uh, Sergeant... Uh, uh... Uh, Dennison, sir. Of course. You know, Professor DeMarco, I've been watching you. What? That sounds ominous. <laughs> Why would a police detective be watching me? Because I'm curious. About what? About the look on your face. What about... The look on my face. It's the only look of its kind in the house. How do you mean that? Well, analyze all the faces around you. What do you see? Excitement, boredom, happiness, anxiety. And what's my look? I would say uh, puzzlement. Actually, you look completely confused. <laughs> I suppose I am. I still can't understand what happened. Otis was my student at the Institute. And you said he'd never amount to anything. I did. And you can see how it's come back to haunt me. <laughs> Believe me, he had absolutely no concept whatever of the elementary principles of art. He had no feeling for line, for color, for form. I recommended he be dropped from the school. <laughs> you not only go out on a limb, you bring your own saw. Well, six months later... He astounded the entire world with his portrait of that alderman's wife. Mm -hmm. The first of the Otis Manley Carter famous portraits. How do you account for that? Well, at first, I refused to believe he could paint like that. And maybe he doesn't. Maybe it's all done with mirrors. No, 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 no. There are no mirrors, no tricks. I went up to his studio. He paints... But where did he learn? How did he learn? From whom? There must be an answer. Naturally. But can you even speculate? <laughs> he probably sold his soul to the devil. You realize that isn't an answer? Of course. But it's the only one I can think of at the moment. <laughs> Come in. Hello there, Otis. Uh, Hope I'm not disturbing you. No, uh, I was about to take a break. Uh, coffee? Oh, sure, sure. That was quite a bash last night, huh? A uh, necessary evil. Uh, you seem to enjoy it. Uh, but that's why it's an evil. It turns your head and wastes your time and keeps you from doing your job. Which, for me, is 
to paint. Where did you learn to paint, Otis? At the Fine Arts Institute. Uh, do you touch sugar? Yeah, one lump, thanks. Yeah, okay. I don't think you learned how to paint at the Institute, Otis. Uh, milk? Yeah, sure. All righty. Professor DeMarco and I had a long talk about you last night. He thought you were a lost cause. Well, he did. And I suppose I was for a while. So? How did the ugly duckling turn into a swan? Well, some people are slow learners. DeMarco claims you just didn't have it. No, he was wrong. I always had it, but it was only in my mind. I was showing him nothing but meaningless blobs and dabs. They had to drop me from the school. Mm hmm Where did you study after that? Well, nowhere. I just went to the museum every day. That's all? That's all. And then... Oh, one morning I was looking at some of the old masters, just worshipping at the shrine, as it were, and wishing and hoping and praying that one day I, too, could... Well, the most remarkable thing happened. Yeah? Well, suddenly everything that Professor DeMarco had ever tried to teach me just began to make sense. No, no, it, it, it was more than that. It, it all became a part of the way I feel and the way I think and the way I see. I... I was trembling all over. What did you do? I went home, picked up my brushes, and from that day on... I was a painter. Just like that. Well, in psychology, there is such a thing as the delayed reaction. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, Bert, Lucy and I want you to join us for dinner tonight, hmm? I never refuse an invitation to dinner. Oh. Otis, hmm? your latest portrait of Lila Beaumont. Uh, poor Lila. She never really saw it. She died the day it was finished. What, uh, what did she die of? I don't know, Bert. I don't think anybody does. Sergeant, I wasn't a regular physician. Who was, Doctor? I don't think she had one. She seemed to be one of those fortunate, healthy people who never needed medicine. Mm -hmm. Where did she die, Dr. Caswell? In Mr. Carter's studio. And since my office is just next door... Was she alive when you got there? Just barely. She seemed to show all the signs of utter exhaustion. So that's what I wrote on the death certificate. Afterward, I thought about it and... I asked for an autopsy. Why? I simply couldn't believe it. Well, what did the autopsy reveal? Nothing. I was right in the first place. But I still don't believe it. Again, why? Well, how could she change so radically in such a short time? What do you mean by change? Have you seen the portrait Carter painted of her? Yes, uh-huh. It's just brimming with robust good health. It's exactly how she looked. Just about two months before she died, I saw her get out of the cab that first time she came to Carter's studio. And? Two months later, I was shocked. Why? As I said, I'd never witnessed such a rapid decline. She was losing a lot of weight. Her color was gone. She looked so tired. What did you think was happening? I didn't know what to think. I decided to speak to Otis. After all, I knew him when he was just a starving young artist. One morning, I walked up to his studio. Well, what can I do for you, Doctor? Busy, Otis? Well, Lila Beaumont will be here any minute. Well, that's what I want to talk to you about. Is she under medical care? Well, why? Well, why should she be? Can't you see why? Well, what are you talking about? Otis, she looks terrible. Oh, she looks great. She's becoming dangerously thin. She has no color. Doctor, she... are you serious? Are you serious, Otis? Well, I, I don't understand what you're trying to say. You mean you can't see anything wrong with Lila Beaumont? She looks better than ever. Ah, good morning, Lila. Hello, Otis. Well, you're looking just sensational, as usual. 
Lila, I'd like you to meet Dr. Caswell. How do you do? Oh, Otis, I... I'm, I'm so tired this morning. Could I have a cup of coffee? Well, coming up, I just have to heat it. Miss Beaumont, I hope you're seeing a doctor. Uh, why? Look in the mirror. Uh, you're very perceptive, Dr. Caswell. Perceptive? It's obvious. For one thing, you're losing your looks. Oh, uh, yes. Your looks are your livelihood. Shouldn't you want to do something about it? What can I do? There's a... a man and he no longer loves me. But a doctor could prevent this ravaging. There's no way a doctor can help me. But you need special treatment. I would say, Miss Beaumont, that right now you should be in a hospital. Oh, you may be right, doctor. I don't care anymore. Just don't care anymore. Is that the reason she died, Dr. Caswell? Because some guy gave her the gate? They say you can die of a broken heart. What do you say? Well, I just can't see a vital and perfectly healthy woman like Lila Beaumont simply withering away in so short a time. But if her appearance had changed so drastically, how come Otis didn't see it? You'll have to ask Otis. You still haven't told me, Dr. Caswell. What did she die of? But I did tell you. I don't know. Nobody knows. Well, what did she die of? And what, if anything, can it have to do with Otis Manley Carter? Detective Sergeant Dennison has a nagging, indefinable feeling. That's just the trouble. In most of the murder cases Bert has solved, the solution always began with a nagging, indefinable feeling. We'll see where this feeling leads when I return shortly with Act Two. Sergeant Bert Dennison has always been an intuitive detective. He trusted his instincts. He played his hunches. He followed his theories wherever they led him, usually to the right answer. But this time, he has absolutely no idea of how to arrive at the answer. As a matter of fact, at this point, he can't even formulate the question. You really should skip dessert, Bert. I'll only have one I... helping. Well, do you want to tell him, Lucy? No, darling, I think you should be the one. Somebody's supposed to tell me something? I hope the wedding hasn't been canceled. <laughs> oh, no, no, Bert. Sunday, right on schedule. Otis has something to say to you, Bert. Uh -huh. We have a wedding gift for you, Bert. Me? Why? I'm not getting married. Well, that's why you need a gift. Now, on Sunday, Lucy is leaving your house forever. Ooh, that sounds kind of stuffy, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> Keep going, darling. You're doing fine. And so, therefore, to make sure you never forget what she looks How like... How can I forget what she Please, looks Bert, like? Please, Bert, don't interrupt. We decided that I would paint a portrait of Lucy and present it to you. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, can you imagine that you're going to own an original Otis Manley coffee? Yeah, yeah, but... Uh, well, what is it? Well, these things are... Valuable. You just can't afford it. Oh, a million dollars couldn't buy all the wonderful things you did for your sister, and I'm grateful. Bert, what's on your mind? Well, isn't it, uh, any bad luck for an artist to paint a picture of his own wife? Oh, now, where did you ever hear that? They all did it. Bert, something is bothering you. Yeah, yeah, well, I, uh, I might as well say it. I don't want to hurt your feelings. But I couldn't accept the gift. Bert! Why? I, uh, I just can't explain it. Uh, Otis, you want to give me a gift I'd really like? Well, of course. Well, just promise me you'll never paint a picture of Lucy. Never. Now, what kind of nonsense... I'm asking him, Lucy. What about it, Otis? Well, one of the reasons I'm marrying her is so that I can always have her near me, so that I can... 
always capture those fantastic expressions and moods. Oh, and... really? I thought you fell in love with my mind. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I, I did. It, it's your mind that gives animation and meaning. What about it, Otis? I wish you'd tell me why. I wish I could. But I don't think I can. How about it, Otis? Will you promise? All right, Bert. I promise. Homicide, Lieutenant Callahan. Oh, oh, nothing to hear, just sitting around. Hmm? Nobody, just Bert Dennison. Oh, no. no. He used to be a million laughs. He isn't anymore. Just stares into space all day. That's so. all. All right, I'll tell him. You ought to get married, Bert. What's a little zing in your life? And now that your sister's gone, you've got no excuse. Why don't you get off my back? Jenny was downtown this morning. She told me she ran into your sister. I'll even buy your... What did you say? Jenny saw your sister Lucy in one of the stores. She couldn't have seen my sister. Lucy and Otis are on a trip to Mexico. See? You don't know everything. Maybe they came back. As a matter of fact, maybe that's why they came back. What are you talking about? Jenny said Lucy didn't look too good. She what? Hey, Bert, where are you going? Bert! Yes, it's Bert. You never told me you were back. Oh, we... We meant to. We, we just got in this morning and we haven't even unpacked. Of course not. How could you unpack when you never packed in the first place? All your clothes are in the closet. Bags are up on the shelf. You didn't go anywhere, did you? Oh, we... Oh. I want you to call a doctor. What? It's Dr. Caswell. He's just next door. Well, why do I need a doctor? You look terrible. Oh, well... You it... lost about five pounds. There's no color in your face. Oh, it's absolutely true. I, I lost five pounds because I'm on a diet. And if there's no color in my face, it's because I don't have my makeup on. You sound tired. Well, we were up late last night. Why did you want me to think you were in Mexico? Bert, you and I, we've been very close. We've shared a home. You've practically raised me. Never mind all that. What are you leading up to? Well, we'd see each other every day and talk to each other and actually have no lives away from each other. I wasn't aware of that. So... I thought that since I'm a married woman, now we'd, we'd just have to get used to a, a different kind of relationship. Uh-huh. You can tell when I'm lying. I can tell when you're lying. Otis broke his promise, didn't he? What promise? His promise never to paint your picture. Well, how, how can you say that? Why don't I ask you? You can't ask him. He isn't home. All right, I'll wait. But he, he may be gone all day. Who no rang the bell just before? Oh, Hi, Bert. How are you? I'm oh, just fine. Just fine. You've been painting, I see. Anyone I know? Well, I haven't been painting exactly. I've been cleaning brushes, things like that. You know, chores. Why don't we go inside and see? Bert! Bert! If, if you walk into that studio, I, I'll never talk to you again as long as I live. If I don't walk into that studio, you'll be dead in a month. Bert! Oh, Bert. We wanted so much for you to have a portrait of me. Yeah, so I see. No, not yet, you don't see. It's nowhere near finished, but but you can just sense what it's going to be like. Bert, it's going to be my finest work because it's for you. Oh, darling, don't be unreasonable. You can't finish that painting, Otis. Tell me why. Why? Otis, Otis. For some reason, you kill the people you paint. What? Don't Bert? interrupt me. It's not easy to say this. And I can imagine what it must sound like, but... Otis, you've painted the portraits of five women. Every one of them is dead. But that has nothing to Each do with Each one my... died on the day you finished the portrait. Bert, have you any idea what you're I saying? I know what I'm saying. And it gets worse. But it's true. What's true? Otis, the truth is you're not a painter. How can you Please, say Please, this that? isn't easy, sis. Just thank God there were three people who love each other. 
and can solve our problem together. Bert, how can you say I'm not an artist? DeMarco said you had absolutely no talent. DeMarco? He's a jealous old fraud. But he's right. When you came to him, you had absolutely no ability, no talent. How do you account for the fact that I create so many paint, Otis? Bert. Hear me out, please. Somehow, and I don't even think you're aware of it, you have the ability to drain the life out of your subject and project it onto the canvas. Well? Uh, I, I, I just don't understand what you're saying. You're not aware of it. You didn't notice that Lila Beaumont was actually dying before your eyes, just as the others did before her. Her, tell me this is a joke. No, it isn't a joke. Look at Lucy Otis. She doesn't look ill. I honestly can't see anything wrong. Lucy, look in the mirror. Look. And then tell me there's nothing wrong with you. I don't have to look. I know. Then what I have been saying... It's just that... Uh, well, I, I've been worried. About what? About Otis. Darling, why? Oh, I'm afraid one day you'll get tired of me. <sighs> Lucy. There's so many women who are after you. But and... you're the only woman I want. You know that. Yes, I know. But sometimes I can't sleep at night. And that's the reason that I'm not looking my best. No, no. The painting's the reason. And, Otis, you must promise to destroy that painting. I can't do that. Then I will. Bert, put down that knife. Take your hand off me, Otis. Bert, Bert, don't hit him. I won't let you destroy my painting. And I won't let you kill my sister. Otis! Otis! Bert! Don't do that! Lucy, Lucy, stop him! That takes care of that. Bert, you're crazy. Get up, Otis. I didn't hit you that hard. Look at what you did to my painting. Do you know what you've done? Yes. I destroyed the canvas. And look. Look at your wife. Look at yourself, Lucy. Your color is back. Bert, you're a fool. If my color is back, it's because I'm, I'm furious. No, no. You've got your old vitality and strength. You'll be all right now, Lucy. Bert! There's really nothing we can talk about. I did what I had to do. And now let's, let's forget it. Except for one thing, Otis. Promise me your word of honor that you'll never try to paint Lucy's portrait again. But I can't promise. I'll put it this way, Otis. If you ever try to paint her portrait, I'll kill you. Hi, Bert. Callahan. Thought I'd find you down here in the range. Good cluster, except for that one shot off to the left. Probably a faulty cartridge. Sure, it's never the shooter, it's always the show. What is it you're getting out of your system tonight? Nothing, nothing at all. Want to sit down and talk for a minute? About what? About you and me. All right. What is there to say? We have to decide what I'm going to do about you. Why? Because Otis and Lucy were in my office this afternoon. They're two very scared kids. They've got nothing to be scared of. Not for themselves. For you. Why? Oh, come on, Bert. You know why they told me everything. Oh, that's nice. My own sister. She only did it because she loves you. Yeah, yeah. She told you how all of them die when he paints their portraits? Yeah. Well, what do you think? Here's what I think. I just put in this application. Application? For your leave of absence. But I'm not... Yes, the... you are. It'll all be done quietly, and when you're better, you can come back to duty as if nothing happened. Where am I supposed to go? There's a private sanitarium. Absolutely the top doctor. Callahan, I'm not crazy. Of course not. You just got this temporary little quirk. But... And it can be ironed out easily. Subconsciously, I guess you just miss not having Lucy around the house. Well, thanks for everything, but I'm not going. In, uh, in light of what happened in the studio this morning, I'm afraid your choices are limited. Callahan! Is it the quiet private sanitarium or... 
Do we have to put you into the city hospital for observation? Callahan, what are you telling me? I'm telling you to hand over your revolver. Who was it who wrote, Heaven keep me safe from my well-meaning friends? It's certainly a sentiment that's shared right now by Detective Sergeant Bert Dennison. All he wants to do is prevent a terrible tragedy. And who's trying to stop him? Those people who truly love him. We're going to meet more well-meaning people when I return shortly with Act Three. The best mirror is the face of an old friend. Sergeant Dennison stares at Lieutenant Callahan. Stares at the look on Callahan's face. It's a strange look. A look that's a mixture of pity, concern, and fear. And suddenly Dennison realizes that this must be the same look that showed so often when he knew he had to arrest a suspect who might turn out to be criminally insane. I have to have your service revolver, Bert. You want to put the cuffs on me too, Callahan? Cut it out. Why not? It's a pinch, isn't it? It's nothing of the sort, and you know it. Now, look. Let's go to your apartment, pick up some stuff, and I'll drive you to this place myself. Tell me something. Tell me something, Callahan. Don't you want to hear my side of it? Bert, you slugged your brother-in-law. You slashed the painting. Mm -hmm. So? That's violence. You and me, we never used violence in the line of duty? Justified force. Slice it anyway. Why am I wrong this time? Because what you say is crazy. Callahan... You and me, we're not the new breed of college cops who know everything. But still, we're very careful about that word crazy. You mean you really believe Otis kills people by painting their portraits? Yeah, yeah. Quit fighting me. Work with me. How? Let's go out and get some expert testimony. What's here? This is the doctor who attended Lila Beaumont just before she died. And he's completely stumped by the whole thing. Yes, I was dissatisfied with the cause of death. Dr. Caswell, you said you didn't believe she could change so radically in so short a time. I did say that. You also said you couldn't see how a splendid physical specimen like Lila Beaumont could just wither away. Yes, I remember. I did say that, too. And even though you signed a death certificate which listed exhaustion as the cause of death, nobody really knew what she did die of. Well, I've since... I've since come to believe that she really could have died of exhaustion. But you said... Exhaustion plus loss of the will to live. But you were convinced there was a mysterious cause. I didn't use that word. But, Doctor, you led me to believe... I was merely ventilating some doubts, some misgivings. But the other women who died... I wasn't there. I don't know. You told me, Professor DeMarco, that Otis had no concept of the basic principles of art. I did. No feeling for line, form, color. I think I said something like that. And since those things can't be learned, there was no way he could become a painter. Oof. It's a relative thing. Well, you even went so far as to say the only way he could have learned them was if he'd sold his soul to the devil. That was a figure of speech. He never did learn to be a painter. Something happened. He found a way. Or was given a way, who knows, to draw the vital essence from a living thing and put it on canvas. I don't think I could agree with... I can prove it. Look at everything he's done. He's never painted an inanimate object. Just the face, the body, but no clothes, no furniture, no jewels, no decorations. I'm sorry if I gave you the wrong impression. Maybe... Maybe I was jealous. Jealous of what? You said he had no talent. Maybe that was a lie I told myself. Maybe I resented his youth, his promise. 
After all, I never fulfilled mine. Yeah, sure. And besides, you really don't want to be remembered as the art teacher who flunked Otis Manley Carter. I guess that's the simple answer. I wish there were such a thing as a simple answer. Well, Bert, you've got to admit it's really a comfortable room with a great view of the ocean. And you've even got a refrigerator. Yeah. What happens now, Callahan? Well, uh, starting tomorrow, the doctors will begin working with you. You'll be straightened out in no time. I see. I'm the one who has to be straightened out. That's how it is. Even if I happen to be right. Those are the rules of the game, Bert. But I'm not crazy, Callahan. You and I know what crazy is. Crazy is when most people don't agree with you. You're a big help. I'll come up and see you this week. I can hardly wait. I better ring for the guy to come let me out. What do you mean you got a ring? Well, uh, the door's locked from the outside. Huh? It doesn't mean anything, Bert. It's just routine. I mean... Yeah, I know what you mean. I might as well be in jail. You wanted something, Sergeant? Yeah, yeah, Jerry. I'm going to make a phone call. Well, you can't. What do you mean, I can't? Well, the first couple of weeks you can't. It's like you got to get your interviews and orientation. But I have to make a phone the call. The doctor says... Forget said... what the doctor says. Look, part of the treatment is to isolate you completely from your former environment. But I have to know if my sister is okay. She's okay. How do you know? Because if she wasn't, you'd be told about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, listen, uh, I know, I know I can't make a phone call. But if I could, where would I make it from? Well, there's a phone outside, at the end of the hall. There is, huh? Jerry, I want to show you something. What? <laughs> Lucy. What? Lucy. Yes, I'm Lucy. Who is this? It's me, Bert. Who? Bert. No, Bert is... Bert isn't here. Could you call back later? Lucy! Oh, my good Lord. Lucy. What? Who... He's painting your picture again. I've got to destroy that canvas. Don't move, Bert. Otis. Don't make me shoot, Bert. Now listen, Otis. You don't want to kill me. No. I don't even want to hit you in the foot, but I'm a bad shot. Now please, Bert, just stand still. What are you doing with the gun, Otis? That's not your style. Callahan called us. He said you'd broken out of the sanitarium. He wants me to phone him if you show up here. You're killing Lucy. Look at her. Bert, I, I don't know what's gotten into you. Is the painting almost finished? What business is that of yours? What more has to be done on the painting? Well, I just have to finish your mouth. Uh, and when you do, she's going to die. How can you believe... Do you love her, Otis? You know I love her. Destroy the painting. I can't. I can. I'm warning you, Bert. I'm going to walk into your studio. And I'm going to destroy that painting. You take one step and I'll shoot you. I'll just have to take the chance. I've still got five bullets in the gun. All of them can't miss. Otis, look at Lucy. Look at her. She's dying. That, that isn't true. You don't want to see it. If I could prove you're killing her, would you destroy the painting? How could you prove that? Would a... you destroy the painting? Yes. Let's go back into the studio, Otis. Oh, no, it, it's a trick. You've got the gun, Otis. What are you afraid of? Come on. I right, you just stand near the wall. You keep far away from my painting. It's beautiful. Then why do you want me to destroy it? Because it is Lucy. Why did you bring me in here to prove? That you kill a living thing when you paint it. On the windowsill, Otis, that flower, that geranium, paint it. Sure, I'll put the gun down and pick up the brush and you'll jump. You're afraid. You're scared. You're crazy. What you're saying is crazy. Here's your chance to prove it, Otis. Paint that flower. 
And if nothing happens to it, I promise I'll go away quietly. I... Well? I will. <laughs> Quick sketch. How do you like it? It's beautiful. All right, now look at the windowsill. Look at the geranium. Go on, look at the... Ger oh. Oh, no, Bert, what... What, 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 what... what happened to it? You can see what happened. I can't believe it. But it's true. The color is gone. It's wilted, withered. It's dead. No. They're all dead. Lila Beaumont. Those other women. And Lucy is dying. Before it's too late, Otis, you know what you have to do. No. Otis! You, you, you do it for me. No. You have to destroy that canvas yourself. Why? Because I can't keep watching you guarding my sister forever. You have to put an end to it yourself. I promise I won't paint Lucy. You must never paint anybody. Uh I, I, I don't know if I can give it up. But you're not really a painter, Otis. Somehow you, you, you stumbled into some sort of mysterious power. And now you've got to give it up. Destroy the painting. I'll go back to Lucy. How do you know I just won't finish it? How, how can you trust me? I trust you. I trust you because you love Lucy. Lucy? Lucy? Mm hmm? Who Lucy. is it? Oh! Oh, Bert, oh, I, I must have been napping. Oh, I feel so refreshed. Yes, you're looking better. Bert, what are you doing here? You're supposed to I be. I know, I know. I'm supposed to be crazy. I don't worry about it. Otis? Bert's here. Shouldn't we. No, no, no. No, I, everything's all right. I better go straighten everybody out. Especially Callahan. The painting? Is it my imagination or did... What happened to the painting? I, um... Decided to give it up. Otis, how could you? Will you... Will you love me even if I'm not a famous painter? But, darling, I... Sure she'll love you, Otis. She'll love you even more. She'll love you even more. There's a lot of truth to that, Otis. A woman in love with a famous man has a problem. She wants him all to herself. But she is forced to share him with the entire world. And you ladies in our audience might think about it, too. If you're married to a man who doesn't seem to be going anywhere special, look on the brighter side. Just think. You can have him all to yourself. I'll be back shortly. What killed those women? A coincidence of real and fancied illness? Or can an artist really drain the life from a living creature and transform it to canvas? Certain primitive tribes agree. It's taboo to create a likeness. Maybe they know what they're talking about. Our cast included Nat Poland, Marion Seldes, Jack Grimes, Jackson Beck, and Roger DeCoven. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. I told you I burned it. And you know that's a fairy tale that no one will believe. I don't care whether you believe it or not. Now, are you coming with me? Where? To talk to your Colonel Blake. He won't see you. Oh, oh, oh I think he will. Goodbye, Carol. It was nice knowing you. I think... You will kindly step back into your room, Monsieur Philly. Now, wait a minute. Move. I am Major Simonovich. Oh, of the gay pay you or the NKVD? It does not really matter. What matters is that you and I have something to discuss. I warned you. Yeah, sure you did. I do so dislike dealing with amateurs. This is strictly a business. You mean you want to make a deal with me? Correction. I mean you would find it wise if you wanted to make a deal with us. For the paper? Exactly. 
Where is it? No, no, not so fast. Not so fast. You spoke about a deal? You give us the paper, we give you your life. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.